Well, hello again. Welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Aidan Larson asks why this, uh, why my videos always sound as though they've been done in a comms room. Well, I suppose it's because there's always a fan on on something. If it's not the valve amplifier, it's that, it's that power supply. You can probably hear it running in the background. Okay, well, as uh, unboxing videos seem to be quite popular, I don't really know why, but they seem to be, I thought I've got a parcel to unbox, so I'll do an unboxing video. As you can see, it's addressed to VK6CS at CS Castle, down under. Okay. Didn't really want to give the address away, but uh, what, uh, what the hell, eh? Right, so let's see what's uh, let's see what's inside the box. If I can get the cellar tape off me, Leatherman. Right. Uh, I don't think you can see that. Uh, not supposed to book company logos on social media without clearing it with corporate. I don't think you can see my. I'm still wearing my company shirt. <coughs> I just wanted to knock this video out before it gets dark. Okay. Let's give it a go. Um, right, of course, down under, of course, is a matter of perspective. If you think about it, Antarctica, which is at the bottom of the planet, actually sort of points in towards the centre of the galaxy. So, any aliens coming to visit us that live a little bit closer to the centre of the galaxy would consider everything in the Northern Hemisphere to be down under. But uh, going off at a tangent. Uh, God, this is good packaging. Either that or my Leatherman is blunt. Uh -huh. Okay, let's make sure this is still in the field of view. Yes, it is. There's my invoice. Now, woohoo! Oh, well, that's nicely packaged, isn't it? Looks like the sort of thing you'd uh, wrap up a Dalek in. If you're gonna, if you're gonna ship a Dalek, you'd be, uh, you'd be using this stuff. that. Some other stuff in here. That's the uh, the bias T that goes with it. So you've probably already guessed what it is. Something requiring a bias T. And got a nice MFJ catalogue. And before anyone leaves any comments, yes, I do know what it's called. Colloquially, colloquially, you know what I mean, known as. <laughs> Looking good. So far, so good. And the item itself. Right. Making sure it's still in shot. Packaged. Ooh. That looks pretty serious. Oh, like that. Transmitter input, wire. There's the antenna, so coaxial or wire. Nice ceramic pillar there. Guessing that's ceramic. Uh, it could be some, uh, uh, what do they call them these days? What's a fancy word these days for plastic? Composite material. There you go. <laughs> and there is the beast. And of course, you all know now what it is. Because I've got that um, valve linear amplifier, I wanted an auto tuner that could actually take the full output power from it. So I've got something that uh, 
will easily, or it should easily, take the output power from the amplifier. I thought I'd get one that was very conservatively rated so that uh, there wouldn't be any problems with it. This would uh, this should handle this should handle 400 watts all day and all night. It's the MFJ. I think it's a nine. Oh, what is this thing? 998 RT 998 remote tuner. Stuff out of the way. Oh, look at that. Hours of stress relief with all that bubble wrap. So there it is, the MFJ. 998RT, um, full legal power tuner, full legal power in America that is. So it should have no trouble whatsoever handling the 400 watts I'm going to put through it with my uh, with my old FLDX2000. Um, so it's got a, uh, hang on let's just have a look at the camera shot, it's the wrong way up. Now I can't show it to you because the uh, the camera's the wrong way up. But anyway, you get the picture. You can see uh, bottom left. There's a power connector there, a ground connector, a transmitter, and DC input. Uh, that's if it's fed through the bias T, of course. And then on the other side, we've got a wire antenna output and uh, coaxial antenna output. So there it is. And uh, I'll uh, I'll fire it up and uh, I'll fire it up and do a video, put some power through it, make sure it's all it's auto tuning nicely, and um, I'll be feeding it um, via the bias T because uh, I've already got a bias T uh, type arrangement. The good thing about this is you only need one bias T, so in here there must be a bias T uh, installed inside it. So I can just connect the coax to this. I'll read the manual, of course, but um, the impression I get at the moment is I can connect the coax to this, run it back to the house, and put the bias T at the other end, connect the radio and the 12 volts, and I'm in business. Um, I think um, if I needed a bias T this end, they'd have sent me two bias Ts. So uh, that's quite nice as well, isn't it? At the end there, can you see that hole? So you can run the wire through, so if it's bolted, if this thing's bolted to uh, you know, a bulkhead or uh, you know something on a I don't know on a boat on a truck or whatever, um, there's a nice hole in it to run the uh, the antenna wire out of from the uh, from the top of the insulator there. There's an earth uh, no, nice uh, ground lug on that. Another one over there. Another one there. The light is fading. The sun is falling. There we go. Well, not literally, I hope. But, uh, so, I think uh, that was rather nice. And uh, looking forward to uh, squirting some watts through it. There we go. The MFJ. Uh, what did I say it was? <laughs> 998 RT. Automatic remote antenna tuner. As always, uh, hope you found that interesting, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll uh, I'll catch you next time.